the the main thought that that I have these days, and the thing that I think is is uh, is really important, is that it's one thing to do to create a prompt, right? To do a work, to do some work, have some content, and put in a prompt, and optimize the prompt, and find out what, how to use examples and settings and so on to get uh, the the uh, AI to do to do something interesting that you want. But once you've done that. Uh, and you've done this for you know a few hundred or a few thousand words, and, and you've interacted with the uh, with the text box and and, uh, and done your thing. Then you have to ask yourself, what if I had a million words? What if I'm supposed to be doing this on a million words? So the uh, the key here, and because you know at the end of the day, this is only useful if you can apply it to a million words. So I encourage you to think about your uh, your prompting and your uh, and your use cases in such a way that you can do two things. On one hand, that you can figure out a prompt that is a modular type of thing that you can build automatically through the rest of your tech stack, through some algorithmic sort of, uh, um, sort of process that is you know, looking up certain assets and things like that, so that you can actually repeatedly build, repeatedly build a prompt with maybe different, uh, uh, different pieces in it that will uh, be such that GPT can reliably produce some reliable output uh, from it. So that means thinking about what kind of assets you want to you want to keep on the side that your software can actually uh, get um, and uh, build prompts with. Uh, what is the structure of such a prompt uh, so that you can kind of repeat that prompt and make it uh, make variants of it uh, for different types of uh, of content or sources and so on uh, and the like. So that is one aspect of things that I think uh, you know is really important to think about. The other uh, side of the coin is once you have your prompt, um, the idea is also to um, create that prompt such that the output of GPT is a parsable output. So thankfully, it's you know pretty good at doing JSON and XML and stuff like that. So that's that's uh, you know it's not like it's a complicated thing to do, but it's a thing where if you want to insert GPT within automation pipelines of some kind, uh, repeatable things that you can uh, you know rely on to to automate um, your your processes and that don't break, you need to have an output from GPT which is consistent and parsable, where you can retrieve the pieces of it that you specifically care about. And this is, um, you know, these these two aspects. Kind of, how do I, how do you automatically build prompts once you've figured out what is the right prompt, you know, shape and tone and so on? How do you kind of make it such that you can create automatically these prompts? And those prompts, how do you kind of uh, make them such that the output of GPT is a predictable output? And I don't mean predictable non only in the content side of things, where you would be dealing with your uh, your temperatures and, and other settings, but you know, uh, repeatable in terms of shapes and formats, so that you can have you can insert this into your content pipelines that you can then you know um, process downstream. Um, I think that it's really important because um, if we only use large language models as some kind of you know let's say computer-aided uh, thing where it still requires human interactions to kind of maintain and, and run these prompts and create them and so on. Um, well, you know, it's an interesting tool, but it's not an industrial tool. And the idea is to turn uh, these tools into industrial content processing tools. Um, the, 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 the key use case of GPT is, you know, is something like, you know, I want to write a blog post, here's a bit of information, and then help me get the start right. Because this activity is a human activity where you have a writer who's writing something. For us, we process content industrially, and we need to have industrial ways of leveraging uh, um, this technology at scale. Uh, the reason why I think it's important is because GPT is not just a generative thing, it's a, it's a transformative thing. It's a thing that can transform text and, and kind of create new versions of the same text. And that means it can also edit text. And I think that for us, the, the main capability of GPT is about editing text. And that's, that's a use case which is still, I think, in my experience, um, uh, kind of, you know, in development, let's say, right? There's a lot of uh, experiments and so on that we can do, but um, uh, there's, still, there's still a lot of work that remains to be done uh, there. So what I would, um, what I would uh, uh, close with uh, this little uh, introduction is to think of it in terms of the fact that the, the introduction of, these, uh, of this technology is such that in the future, 
content producers, people who write content and who produce content, will be using these technologies to produce their content. And a lot of content generation is also kind of uh, susceptible to this kind of uh, automation. And so if you're a company that's going to be using uh, as a content producer, generator, originator, if you like, and if you're going to be using these technologies to help your generation of content, then there is no real strong business model and economic justification for you to remain in the paradigm of I'm doing my thing in my domestic market and then I'm going to uh, turn to a localization company to, to translate it. It's, th that doesn't make a lot of sense when you think about it. So the real use case that are going to come along are going to be use cases about generating content multilingually. And thankfully, we are, you know, as localizers, um, our, the ability to kind of take content, edit it in multilingual shapes and forms, uh, and so on is, is really our core business. And this will work, provided that we can find the automation, the industrial scale of content processing that, are, uh, that the, the large language models uh, make possible. So there you go. Um, I'll leave you with those uh, thoughts. I hope that you're, uh, you're going to have fun uh, producing those prompts. Remember, think about actual prompt automation itself, not just the prompt as a way of automating something, but the way of automating the prompt is important. And then how it is that you parse the output, that you don't require a human to interpret the output in order to be able to use it downstream, so that you can have editing workflows and use GPT as an editing uh, tool where you can automate a supervised production of uh, multilingual content.